Well, obviously, um, our fans are going to go out to sports bars. We're going to tune into the game on Denver 7. Uh, tip off at 6 30. Um, supposed to be at Pepsi Center, right? This game tonight would have been packed. Game seven, it would have been awesome, but uh, yeah, they're in Orlando in the bubble, so um, we'll deal with it. We'll, uh, we'll talk about virtual fans, and we'll talk about real fans with Gary Broad, and uh, we'll hear from uh, everybody involved. Michael Malone just uh, held his pregame presser uh, moments ago. We'll hear that. We'll hear from Jamal Murray. Uh, we'll hear from Nikola Jokic. Uh, we'll hear from Portland Sutton at Broncos camp. Kyle Freeland of the Rockies wearing a Nuggets jersey uh, like Nick has on. Uh, today, um, and we'll talk about virtual fans. As I said, Nick is going to be one of those big faces you'll see courtside tonight, yelling and screaming like Peyton Manning the other day. It'll be fantastic. So anyway, here we are in Facebook Live, uh, also live on the DenverChannel.com, and uh, your streaming device as well. Welcome our streaming audience to our special half-hour preview, Nuggets and Jazz Game 7 tonight on Denver seven. So let's get started, shall we? Um, give the audience uh, time to uh, to get going here. Uh, we've already got uh, comments coming in from uh, from our audience as well. Um, let's see. Let's read some of these things. Go Nuggets from KK Tomdano. Eric Simmons says Go Nuggets. Uh, it's going to be great. Scott Sparkman as well. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, for tuning in. A lot of people though are not happy. Uh, we've got Lori Brewer saying. Why is seven wasted energy not going to watch the NBA? Okay. All right. Free country. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk to some comments. Um, and we'll talk to some people as well. But first, let's hear from uh, head coach Michael Malone, guys. He held his uh, game seven pregame presser just a few moments ago. And uh, he talked about uh, what the vibe was today uh, amongst the Denver Nuggets uh, down in the bubble in Orlando. Let's listen to that. Yeah, I would, um, Sarah, I would say that our group is, uh, is pretty relaxed. You know, just being in the locker room for the last half an hour and listening to guys as I'm doing my work and uh, preparation, you know, our guys are loose. Uh, they're joking. Uh, they seem very, very um, relaxed going into this. And maybe that speaks to the fact that we had two game sevens just last year against both San Antonio and Portland. And maybe it also speaks to the fact that we have had two straight elimination games where it was win or go home. Uh, so our guys are, I don't get the sense that our guys are tight or nervous or quiet. They're just being themselves, and that's great to see. All right, that was Michael Malone just moments ago. Right, let's get some quick comments, guys. Nick, from you first. Malone says they're relaxed. Uh, they've been through two game sevens, and actuality in game five and six must win. Do or die, and they came through. What do you see happening here tonight in Game 7? Well, I think that M Malone speaks truth to the fact that this Nuggets team has been through the ringer the last two postseasons. If you remember, they went to Game 7 with San Antonio. They went to Game 7 against the Portland Trail Blazers as well. So as far as experience goes, these guys have it in elimination games. We just saw what Jamal Murray did a couple nights ago against the Jazz. So there's no reason to think that these guys aren't equipped or ready for a, a game of this magnitude. But my question is how many of these elimination games are they going to be able to hold off and continue to bring the effort necessary in an environment that is antiseptic? Now, if they were coming home to Denver, we think, hey, maybe the crowd lifts them, the bench players play a little bit better, score a little more consistently, and that crowd energy helps to buoy them. I don't know if that happens tonight, and will they have the energy after playing two straight elimination games to bring it again for Game 7? Yeah, that's the thing, Troy, that I'm worried about uh, a little bit is that, uh, man, you go through game five, you get it, you had to have it. You go through game six, wow. You could tell that Jamal Murray was mentally and physically drained after that game when he went backstage after his emotional interview and he put his head down. Can they get this back to the level they need emotionally uh, and physically tonight in game seven to beat the Jazz? Well, I think the advantage is they have momentum, which is huge in sports. The fact that the Jazz haven't figured out how to slow down Murray is a wonderful sign. I do think tonight they're going to pick him up full court. They're going to run double teams at him some. He's still going to get his, but I think it's going to be more in the neighborhood of 35, 36, not 50. You can't wake up tomorrow if you're the Jazz and Murray beat you again by scoring 50 because he's basically uh, – Lionel played like Allen Iverson circa 2001 or pick a Michael Jordan series. And so if you're the Jazz – 
you're going to force somebody else to beat you, whether that's Jokic, whether that's somebody on the perimeter. But can they? I think one thing Nick brought up, like they would clearly have a home court advantage, but playing in that bubble, it's like playing in a side gym or a, uh, an auxiliary gym, the same sight lines. I've never seen players shoot this well because they're not dealing with the crowd. They're not dealing with any kind of depth perception issues. I've, I mean, guys are – Murray is 52 for 81 from the field. That is insane. So I do think they're going to be able to match that energy uh, because of the confidence they have from playing two game sevens leading into this. Yeah, all right. Uh, let's let's hear from Michael Malone. You're right. It's been crazy to watch Donovan Mitchell and, and Jamal Murray go at it. Mitchell's actually averaging more points, 38.7 points a game. Jamal's averaging 34 points a game in this series. They both have hit 31 threes, both of them. 31-31 from three-point land. Uh, both teams are averaging 113 or 111 points a game, both of them. A 111-111. This series is so even. There's no betting line. The betting line is even. There's no favorite. It's crazy. <laughs> Here is Coach Malone uh, moments ago talking about a previous game seven. They played two game sevens last season. They went one and one, and then uh, they played a uh, Two game sevens in actuality already in this series. Here's Michael Malone. Even though, yes, experience is the best teacher. Uh, we've been there. We've done that. And I think, uh, I don't know how many players have the opportunity to ever play in a game seven. And for this to be our third uh, in, in two straight playoffs is kind of remarkable. But uh, we're going to rely on that experience to be something that can maybe calm us down and, and not go into it really, really nervous because we kind of know what to expect. But those weren't in a bubble. You know, those weren't in a situation unlike this uh, where, where things are so different. Uh, so, uh, and this is a different series. You know, so yes, you can draw from it, but the bottom line is we have to go out there and play and understand why we've won the last two games. Our defense in game number five in the second half was terrific. And I thought our defense in game number six after that first quarter was, was great. And yes, Jamal is scoring at an unbelievable clip, but we don't win those games without our defense improving significantly. All right, there's Coach Michael Malone again, guys. Um, let's let's do this. Uh, we'll, we'll get more comments. We'll go out to Gary Broad, who's at a sports bar in Denver where uh, fans will be gathering to watch the game. Um, but let's listen to Jamal Murray since uh, he, he's been the, the, the superstar of this series. He has emerged into a legitimate superstar for sure. I mean, uh, 50, 42, and 50 um, in the last three games. Um, he's kind of taken this team on. He's been the emotional leader. He's been the, the leader when it comes to energy and, and, and pushing the game. And uh, he, he talked about this, the emotion and fire that he's playing with, uh, balancing basketball while trying to uh, honor George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and doing everything he can to help fight racial and social injustice at the same time. Here's Jamal. He plays a lot of heart. He plays a lot of passion. Um, and uh, you know, when you fight for something, you know, it means a whole lot more. And... We've been fighting this fight for a long time, and we're tired of being tired. And, you know, like I said, I go out there and I fight for something. Um, when I lose, I go out there and fight for something. And, you know, as the NBA, we're going to collectively keep, keep fighting. Um, the players are doing everything they can, trying to get involved in any way they can. And uh, we're glad the NBA is helping out and allowing us to use this as a platform. And uh, I want to thank God I'm so for giving us the chance to do this. But, you know, it's, it's an emotional thing because, you know, it's not just me. There's so many other guys, um, as you can tell. And, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's lives. It's not, it's not, uh, or it's your life. It's, it's, your, it's your life. Imagine losing your life. I don't know what else to say. Imagine a father losing their life while they have kids. Imagine father, son, brother getting, getting shot seven times in front of their kids. Imagine that. The least I can go out there and do is, is play for five for seven. So that's what I'm trying to do. All right, next question we'll go to Chris Dempsey. Chris, go ahead. Uh, Jamal, so having said that, how do you, what within you, what place do you go to to be able to perform and then to be able to perform that well when you have so much other stuff um, on your mind? 
I guess I play with a little wind. Um, people want me to be consistent. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not easy. Um, that's why the, that's why the greats are so good because they don't do it just one night. They do it every night. They play hard every night. They bring that will to win every single night. And they will their team is to play harder. And uh, that's what we're trying to do as a league. Um, on the court, I do that. But like I said, we take initiative to make sure every team is rest to the boat so we can go tell everybody else to vote. Um, try to hold, hold ourselves accountable. And when you do that, when you be honest with yourself and, and do the necessary things for change, um, step by step, you know, inch by inch, um, you'll see it. And we know it's not going to happen overnight, but we got to start somewhere. And uh, we got to do more than what we've been doing. And uh, that's why that pause was so big. Now, as a league, we didn't know what to do. Uh, that's why we together, but we're definitely necessary to gather our thoughts and, and uh, try to move in the right direction. Um, we don't want to just come here and play basketball, play for a championship. All right, there's a lot from Jamal Murray there, guys. Can he bring the energy again tonight when it matters, when it's must win, when it's win or the bubble is burst? Can he score 50 points? But, Nick, let's go to you first. Um, Michael Malone said it doesn't matter if Jamal Murray scores 50. That's not going to be the one thing that's going to decide this game. The one thing that's going to decide this game is defense. The Jazz scored 125, 124, 124, 129 in the first four games. The last two, they scored 107, 107. Defense will win this championship or will win this game seven, according to Michael Malone. Well, it's defense, and it's defense specifically on two guys, right? It's Donovan Mitchell and it's Mike Conley. The rest of the team for the Jazz really isn't scoring at all. As much as Jamal Murray has been boosting the Nuggets, Donovan Mitchell's been doing that and more for the Jazz. I don't think they're going to have any shot to stop him. But the when you limit Mike Conley, that's when you bring Utah back down to a very mortal level, and you can play with them any way you want. On the Nuggets side, Nikola Jokic has to have a game tonight. You already discussed that the Jazz aren't going to bed tonight, allowing Jamal Murray to beat them again, whether that's triple teaming him. They're going to find a way to at least slow him down. This has to be a Nikola Jokic game. I don't care if it's a triple-double, 35 points, 20 rebounds. Whatever he's got to do, he is the one that's going to make the difference tonight, whether or not the Nuggets end up moving on past the series. All right, we'll get to Gary Broder in the sports bar in one second. Troy, let's go to you, though, first and talk a little bit about defense. And obviously, you were Broncos insider. You were at Broncos camp today, and they were talking about uh, the Nuggets game tonight, game seven. And uh, we'll hear from Cortland Sutton. But uh, what do you think about uh, about defense tonight? Yeah, if the Nuggets play defense like the Broncos have during training camp, uh, this is going to be a rout. Uh, the Broncos' <laughs> defense has got a chance to be elite. Here's the deal, Lionel. They finally figured out how to play the pick and roll. They've forced Mitchell into making some tougher decisions. You know, Jeremy Grant has been a, a spark plug at times. And let's not discount Gary Harris. You know, guy hadn't played in six months. When he was on the court, they were much better defensively. The last six quarters of Jazz Nuggets, the Nuggets have played good defense. And that's why we thought they were going to win this series. I mean, we talk about it like it'd be a miracle if they win a game seven. The reality is they're a three seed for a reason. They should be Utah. And the last six quarters, Lionel, they played like a team that will be Utah because they figured out the pick and roll. And finally, Utah stopped shooting 58% from three, came back to earth with a thud. So, again, that's why I like the Nuggets' chances is the fact that they have played real defense the last six quarters. And I have a feeling they're going to play similar to that tonight. All right, Game 7 on Denver 7 tonight at 6.30. Gary Brode is out at a, a sports bar. Uh, Gary, uh, tell us where you are. And obviously, uh, sports bar owners uh, across the whole city, across the state, are hoping the Nuggets move on because this means a lot of dollars to the local economy if the team keeps playing. He's muted. Got to unmute your mic, Gary. There you go. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was my fault. I'll take that one. Right Come on, on Blair. Right on. I'll, I'll tell you where, I'll tell you where I am. I, I'm in my element right now. I'm at the bar at uh, DNVR right off Colfax. Uh, to give you a little backstory here of this bar, and I want to kind of show you around here too, because we're starting to see uh, a few uh, Nuggets fans kind of circle in. But to give you some backstory here, this bar reopened March 13th. 
which would normally be a great time for a sports bar. You got Mark Madness and St. Patrick's Day. And then the playoffs should have started right around the quarter. But of course, with COVID, things kind of put things in a very awkward position where owners were actually having conversations about how long can we actually stay open. I want to show you something right here. This has kind of been reality for, for a lot of businesses. And if you can see, there's X's on a lot of tables. If you haven't been to bars, this is what owners are having to deal with. Uh, siphoning off half of, uh, of their um, seating because of COVID to keep that social distancing. So yeah, we, we spoke to the GM and, and he said, you know, we had some tough conversations before sports came back about how long can we actually stay open. I mean, you're seeing the jerseys in the background here. This is a sports bar. How do you stay open without sports? So look, I mean, it's, it's game seven to have it on Tuesday is going to bring in a lot of folks. In fact, here at DNVR, they had an RSVP online in order to show up for this. They sold out in 30 minutes. Now, that meant 50 people would be here, but still, 30 minutes, it shows the impact of bringing folks to sports bars, especially on a Tuesday night, which you likely wouldn't see any other day. So, yeah, if this ends today, if you're hoping it doesn't, obviously it's going to have a huge impact for a lot of businesses who are really relying on this to at least go another round and the avalanche to go another round. The longer this goes, the better it's going to be for business. All right, Gary, thanks, man. Um, uh, let's go back to the Broncos and the Rockies now. Uh, everybody uh, supports the local teams on other teams. You hear it all the time. Uh, the Rockies support the Broncos. The Broncos support the Nuggets. The Avs supports the Raptors, and, and so on and so on. So, Troy, I got the comment today, this morning, from Cortland Sutton about tonight's game. Let's hear that now. The mom is snapped. I think he's 50, 40, and 50 in the past three games, and <laughs> Um, you know, it's fun watching him do his thing to be able to see him uh, repping and then to see all the emotion he had after that last game. You know, uh, I think I'm pretty sure people wrote them boys off after they went down 3 1. So to see them boys fighting that climb, to be able to keep playing, and um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to see uh, for them boys and then for the city. Because I know the city re riding right behind them, you know, hoping that them boys go and finish the deal tonight and move on to the next round. All right, there you have it. And now uh, you, you see Nick Rothschild in his uh, Nikola Jokic Denver Nuggets jersey there. How about Kyle Freeland, Rockies pitcher today, uh, wearing his uh, Nuggets jersey and talking about the game. Let's hear that now. Down 3-1 down with base elimination. Got back to the corner. Um, and, I mean, do the best words in sports, game seven, come next year. Thanks, guys. Good Thanks. But, All right, there you have it, guys. I mean, look, uh, we were out without sports for so long. We had nothing. Uh, and now we have everything going at the same time. We got the Nuggets in the playoffs, the Avs in the playoffs, the Broncos at training camp, the Rapids are playing, and the Rockies are in the playoffs as of right now. So it's a crazy time for all of us. But, uh, but Nick, we, I mean, if the Nuggets lose game seven as a three seed, uh, the way that they – kind of finish up the seeding games where they almost concede and said, all right, we're going to pull our starters in the fourth quarter. We're not going to really try for the two seed. We'll take the three seed and take the Jazz. And if they lose to the Jazz in round one, it's going to be extremely disappointing for all of us. Yes, it will be disappointing. I do sort of push back against this idea that they were too, trying to figure out where they could seed themselves and that they wanted to play the Jazz over potentially the Thunder or even the Rockets. But look at the Rockets-Thunder series anyway. That's going seven games. So you think that the Nuggets weren't necessarily looking at that being like, let's just play where we play and, and rest our guys and end up where we end up because all of these teams in the Western Conference are pretty darn good. The Blazers, a lot of people were picking the Blazers to beat the Lakers early on in that series, although we saw how that turned on or turned what that turned into. So, um, yeah, yes. Would, would, will we be disappointed if the Nuggets end up losing tonight to the Jazz? Absolutely, especially considering the two blowouts in game two, games two and three. But if you had come to me before the season started and said, hey, this is going to be a seven-game series, I would not have batted an eye. I know the Jazz play the Nuggets pretty well, even though the Nuggets have, have beaten the Jazz three times in the regular season. This was not going to be an easy series by any stretch of the imagination. And you got to believe that continuing to sharpen their skills against a team as good as the Jazz can only help the Nuggets if they make it out of this round to move on to play the Lakers or the Clippers. I think this is a good situation for the Nuggets. I hope they win tonight. I believe they'll win tonight. And I, I just I think that in the end, it's the best of uh, the, the situations they could have been. All right. Well, um, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, you want a game seven at home, and that's what they have, although home is in Orlando, and it's a virtual crowd. And, Nick, uh, let's talk about the virtual fans. We've seen them uh, a courtside. We've seen it. We've seen Peyton Manning as a virtual fan, uh, Dikembe Mutombo for the Nuggets. And tonight you're going to be in the crowd in Orlando as a virtual fan uh, for the Denver Nuggets. Talk about this for a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be wild. I'm super excited. Actually, I was supposed to log into the virtual fan room about five minutes ago. I tried that, and it's already going bananas, and I couldn't hear what was going on here versus what was going on there, and I couldn't differentiate the two, and my head was spinning, so I had to turn that off for a minute while we finish this. But, yeah, so I will be in the virtual stands tonight for the Nuggets Game 7. You, you will be watching on Denver 7, so you will likely at some point hopefully see me in the crowd. But before I go and make my way into the virtual fandom, into the kingdom of virtual fandom, if you will, I wanted to get a little bit of a, an idea of what I was, what I'm walking into. So I called up one of my friends, Jace, to see what his virtual fan experience was like. A whole new game. You've seen the famous ones, Shaq, Wheezy, and the goat. No, not that goat, Peyton Manning. Hurry, hurry. But if you're not the sheriff, how does the average Nuggets fan join the party? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, it was very much a random thing, I guess, but it was persistence um, and just kind of making sure that you're there and putting yourself in a position to get picked. Longtime fan Jace Bandolo was diligent in responding to emails, and he got in. You know, you're not at the arena, but you're still, you know, you're rooting in a unique and different way, but it's very, it's fun, and it's, it's just fun. I mean, isn't that the point of everything? He's been to a couple games, virtually, with his trusty co-fan. My dog gets to hang out with me now when we watch the game, so having her pop in, you know, Steve likes to make an appearance and, and, she, and she sees it, so it's just been really fun to have her kind of, you know, pop in whether she knows it or not, but, you know, Shaq called her out, so that's kind of cool. Whoa, 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 what? He called her out, he didn't really know what was going on. He's like, is that a dog? And then just kind of went, he's like the puppy whoopsie. He's like, it was, it was funny. Interacting with your fellow fan and the players on the court, because they can hear you. Jamal Murray with a stroke of genius. Being in the virtual stands seems like a solid substitute for the real thing. For what it is, it's a really cool experience for the fans. I'm really happy the NBA gave us the opportunity to do it. Little things like that that can kind of bring people together, I think is always a, a win for anyone. And it's been a, a really welcome thing for me personally as a fan. So the interesting thing about uh, like these virtual fan rooms is everybody is in the same room. So like if Shaq shows up tonight, I will get a chance to speak to Shaq through the internet. So that, would, that would be kind of cool. The other thing I mentioned in the story is that you can actually yell at the players on the court so they can hear what you're saying. And, you know, if you say bad stuff, you're going to get kicked out of the chat. But so I will have a chance to actively heckle Donovan Mitchell. And the last little nugget I got here is my drink cap. I'm going to be rocking this bad boy. I've got my headphones on, so I can't do it right now. But I'm going to be rocking this bad boy with a couple of LaCroix's Kit it out with some popcorn in my Nuggets jersey on. I'm going to be going nuts out there. <laughs> LaCroix, huh? That's great. What a great story, man. And it's going to be great to watch for, uh, for Nick tonight on the, uh, on the broadcast on ABC and Denver 7, on Game 7 tonight. Um, yeah, guys, look, it's strange that they'll be able to hear you, and there is crowd noise, and hopefully it, it makes a difference uh, for the Nuggets in, in getting that energy uh, tonight. Um, Troy, let's talk to you again. Um, this team had been through a lot um, all the way to get here. Um, remembering back to last year, they lost to Portland in Game 7 at Pepsi Center, where, um, where the fans uh, were obviously for the Denver Nuggets. So uh, the crowd's not going to play a part. Um, let's go back to uh, Jamal Murray, though, and Jokic. Uh, let's hear from, from Jokic right now. We've got some, uh, some, some sound with, uh, with Nikola Jokic, Jokic talking about tonight's Game 7, and then we'll make our predictions and, uh, and talk about this thing and wrap it up. Here's Nick. He's playing amazing. He's playing not just not just scoring-wise, his, uh, his energy, his leadership. He's, uh, he's really uh, playing on a high level, superstar level right now. So mm, we wish uh, the God of basketball going to give him a little bit more of that during, the, during our playoffs. All right, next we'll go to Ohm with ESPN. Ohm, go ahead. Hey, Nicola. Uh, 
This is going to be your third straight Game 7. What's this one going to feel like? Are you guys used to playing these Game 7s now? I mean, to be honest, it was Game 7, the last two games for us. So it's a, it's a win or go home for us. So maybe I think that's, that's why we're playing a little bit relaxed. So like we don't have nothing to worry about. Like if we lose, we're going to go home. So just I think that's why it's, we, the energy is really high. Level. Like we just need to give the effort, you know. Uh, we need we don't give up on the plays, rebound, just help each other. I mean, that's why we are playing really good right now. <laughs> All right, there's Nikola Jokic. Guys, there are um, two words uh, that uh, you know get the emotions going for sports: uh, national championship, one, Super Bowl. Those two words. Game seven, of course, is what we're talking about here tonight. Troy, um, the excitement of watching this series and watching an historic battle between Donovan Mitchell and Jamal Murray, it's going to end tonight. These two are going to go at it. Everything is left on the court. Um, there is no tomorrow. This is what sports is all about, this game seven here tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is why we watch, right? It's the greatest reality TV show is because you can't script the outcome. Reality TV is scripted. Sports are not. And there's so much passion involved. And this brought uh, these Nuggets fans back to life these last two games. And as you mentioned, a game seven, I'm just I'm thrilled that we're able to have this opportunity. And I really feel like the Nuggets are going to play well tonight in a close game. But I do think we're going to get to predictions. But I do think they're going to play well and they're going to make the city proud after what were two of the worst games in franchise history in game two and three. Well, go ahead and make it, man. Prediction time. What do you got? I've got the Nuggets winning 113-110. I got Murray scoring 35, not 50. And it goes back to uh, the EDM, the the DJ over here to my left. Nick goes back to what he said about Nikola, that uh, I think he's going to have 25, 30 points. He's going to be the difference. For me, because they're gonna they're gonna slow Murray to 35. They're gonna win 113, 110. Wow. All right, Nick. Uh you uh said that the Nuggets have the best chance to win a championship out of any pro sports team in Denver. You you said this uh weeks ago on our Zoom chats on a Denver Seven Sports on Sunday night. So uh, they got to win this game, obviously, uh, to make your prediction come true. But uh, so obviously you're picking the Nuggets tonight. I'm not going to rehash that because there's some context there that matters. But we'll move <laughs> on. Uh, Troy, you mentioned you said the Jazz score, are going to score 110 points tonight. If they score 110 or less, the Nuggets win no matter what. That's a pretty easy thing to watch there if you're watching the end of this game. I think if they hold Jamal Murray to 35 points and if this game plays out the way I imagine it might, we may get another overtime thriller. They played the game one. They went to overtime. They played a double overtime thriller in the bubble during the seeding games. I have a feeling they're going to find a way to at least stifle Murray a little bit. Jokic will come alive. The game will be tight down the stretch. And I think we're getting free basketball. I'm not going to give you a score like Troy. All I'm going to tell you is in overtime, the Nuggets are going to win. Skinny Jokic in overtime. Nice. All right, I'm going to give you a score. 120 to 113. Denver Nuggets move on tonight. Um, and thanks, guys. Look, we're, we're going to wrap this up. I invite everybody to, to look at all the comments. It's a very uh, divided fan base right now, sort of like the country is right now as well. Anyway, the game starts on Denver 7 uh, in about a half an hour, 6.30. You can watch pregame coverage on Denver 7 right now. 